Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NTV Sports Page. It's Tuesday, 2nd June, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, Windy's tour gets green light. And in our feature for this evening, local cricketing great passes. We'll take this break, and I'll be right back. Hi, my name is Joanne Fleming, and I'm a lawyer here at Myrna R. Walwyn & Associates. Sometimes trying to exercise and eat healthy can be challenging, especially when you work a 9-to-5 job. However, starting my fit journey has been one of the best decisions I've made. I now have increased levels of energy that last me throughout the day, and exercise is a great way to reduce stress and anxiety. So, if you've started your fit journey, stick with it. And if you haven't, come join us. And remember, fit is beautiful. Well, I'm back and we start with cricket. Cricket West Indies has approved West Indies scheduled tour of England in principle following a meeting with via teleconference last Thursday. The Test Series, part of the World Test Championship, was originally slated to start on June the 4th, but was pushed back because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The boards are now looking at an early July start with the West Indies team arriving in June and isolating prior to the series, which, if it goes ahead, will be played behind closed doors. The board's approval comes days after the CWI chief executive, Johnny Grave, told ESPN Cricket Info that he was increasingly confident that the tour would take place. A CWI statement said that the decision was made after detailed discussions between its medical representatives and those of the ECB, including plans around logistics and creating a biosecure environment during the tour. With the UK government on Saturday releasing stage free guidance for the resumption of elite sport, which permits the return of competition from June the 1st, the tour now awaits approvals from the various regional governments in the Caribbean region for players and staff movement via chartered planes. Players and staff would be screened regularly throughout the tour as part of the comprehensive ECB biosecurity planning. The decision follows weeks of discussions between the two boards, including a phase where CWI wasn't as confident as they have been this past week, given the marked difference in the COVID-19 cases between the two regions. But the ECB's safety plans have changed the CWI's mind. Well, that's certainly good news. We'll take this break and I'll be right back with our feature for this evening. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS-CoV, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS-CoV. The 2019 novel coronavirus 2019 NCoV is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, meaning they are transmitted from animals to humans. Detailed investigations found that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans and MERS-CoV from dromedary camels to humans. Several known coronaviruses are circulating in animals that have not yet infected humans. Common signs of infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. In more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death. To protect yourself and prevent the spread of the infection, practice regular hand washing, covering mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing, thoroughly cooking meat and eggs. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. This message was brought to you by the Nevis Health Promotion Unit. Well, I'm back and tonight cricket is in the spotlight. 
We greet you with the sad news that former local cricketing star and top class of spinner Harold Walters passed away on Sunday, 25th May. We caught up with the Nevis cricket chief, Carlisle Powell, who spoke about the former Nevis and Leeward Islands player. Recently, we lost one of our cricketing stalwarts, Harold Walters by name. And he also had a son, Os he, well, Oscar Walters, who also played for Nevis. Today, I'm with president of the Nevis Cricket Association, Mr. Carlisle Powell, who already extended his condolences to the family. But for the sports page, Nevis Television Sports page, I just am asking Mr. Powell to just say something about his knowledge of Mr. Walters and his contribution to Nevis Cricket, Carlin. We learned with sadness of the passing of Mr. Harold Walters, who was an off-spinning all-arounder for the Nevis Cricket team, and he played a lot of cricket for Nevis. But he did more than just play cricket for Nevis. He also played for the Leeward Islands between the period of 1965 to 1968. And during that period, on an Australian tour of the West Indies, in a game that, if my memory and the story served me right, was played at Warner Park in St. Kitts, Harold Walters, depending on who tells you the story, picked up 4 for 72 or 5 for 72. I prefer the 5 for. But he did mesmerize the Australians who were on tour of the West Indies and had his finest returns in first-class cricket. After his cricket in life, Harold Walters just didn't simply fade away. He came to the park whenever cricket was being played, whenever cricket was being practiced, and he very quietly offered words of advice and wisdom. I've never heard him raise his voice in anger at a young cricketer or at anybody. He was there to offer advice and suggestions, and he wasn't intrusive. His son, Oscar, also played cricket for Nevis and for the Leeward Islands youth team as well. And I've taken the opportunity to communicate with Oscar Walters and with his sister, Faye Walters, and extended to them some of the messages of condolences that we've received at the Nevis Cricket Association from member territories of the Leeward Islands Cricket Association and also from former West Indies players. Ezra Mosley from Barbados, for example, sent his condolences, as did Philo Wallace, as did Kenny Benjamin in Antigua. And so all of those we'd want to pass on and to give our own condolences on behalf of the Navy's Cricket Association to his wife, Clara Walters, MBE, and all of his children, and in fact, to all of his extended cricketing family and blood family. Harold Walters, you serve Nevis with distinction. And another interesting aspect of the story when it comes to Harold Walters, there was a Nevis Sports Association, which was the Eugene walwyn led Cricket Association, the Sports Association. And then when the Nevis Cricket Association was formed in 1973 and decided to have a break with the Nevis Sports Association, Harold Walters was one of the players who came across to the fledgling Nevis Cricket Association and helped the Nevis Cricket Association to get a team and to find its footing. And so the modern Nevis Cricket Association will eternally be grateful to somebody like the late Harold Walters. May his soul rest in eternal peace. And so, from the Nevis Television Sports page, we extend the condolences to Lady Clara Walters, MBE, Oscar, and the other children and family members. That's our package for this evening. I am Curtis Morton, reminding you that you can watch sports if you're not fit. But to play sports requires fitness, diligence, and sacrifice. Have a good night. <laughs>